You know Mini, right? 1959, tiny, iconic. And you know BMW Mini too, yeah? 2001, slightly less tiny, caps lock, iconic. You do have to hand it to BMW for what it's done with Mini since 2001. It has sold millions of them. I mean, it's made millions of types of them as well. And that's much to the chagrin of people who still think that they should be the size of, I don't know, Hasbulla's hat. <laughs> you just can't argue with the success of this thing, and it's mainly because BMW got the original design in 2001 absolutely spot on. And then it hasn't really changed the core three-door model that much since at all. It is about to, though. Uh-huh. In 2021, Mini confirmed that its last internal combustion engine, Mini, will arrive in 2025. And after that, the brand goes all electric. In the meantime, though, we are very soon going to get a brand new core three-door Mini hatchback. Now, as I'm stood here, the official pictures of that car are all covered in camo, so you can't really see what it looks like properly. But someone did find an undisguised one somewhere in a car park in China and then posted pictures of it to the big internet. And looking at the back and inside at the circular touchscreen, we've got a very different Mini coming in 2023. Although it turns out that the front of the new car has been very much previewed with the latest facelift of today's model. Which is what we're driving today, but not just any facelift Mini, uh, John Cooper Works facelift mini. And that's great, mainly because it sounds like this. So we're not gonna be here for very long today, right? Because I probably can't tell you much about a car that's basically been doing the same thing for about 20 years. I'm not saying it. I'm not saying go-kart, right? I'm not doing it. Go-kart. So first the facelift bits. The main thing is, well, the face. This is the second facelift of the third BMW era mini hatchback, which is actually pretty old now in car terms. It was born in 2015. You'll probably agree it's a pretty strong change though. The fog lights have been dumped and you get this gob-shaped frame around the grille and new vertical air intakes. There's more black trim as well, that's a standard move these days. It makes the whole thing look altogether neater and deeper. The back is a bit more subtle, it's still distinguished by those Union Jack headlamps. They're terrible things in my opinion, but there you go. And a reshaped bumper. There are three new colours too, blue, grey and yellow basically. And if you want, you can pay for this minging global hypercolour style roof option. Inside, it's pretty much the same story as that Cinderella horror I saw once at the theatre. They've killed off buttons. Love that gag. So you get these haptic panels on the steering wheel and the same sort of thing underneath the touchscreen. It's really nice because you don't actually lose any functionality. They still work as individual buttons, but it all just looks a lot neater. The basic architecture is the same, although they have lifted the cabin a little bit, not literally, but by adding bits of black in various places. So you get black surrounds around the air vents and this gloss black panel down here. And the digital instrument cluster that launched with the Mini Electric is now available across the range too. This car's got it. To be honest, I'm not its biggest fan. It does look a bit better in the pictures, but it's a bit low definition. And it's slightly off center to the left when you look through the steering wheel. And once you notice that, you can't unnotice it. Overall, the cabin is just a little bit neater now, but still very friendly and familiar and lovely. A bit like after your dog's had a haircut. All the powertrain stuff is the same. You can't get a diesel mini. No, mo. For show. And incidentally, if you're interested in the electric mini, I've already reviewed that separately, so I'll put a link in the description below, or you can search for it. So I'm showing you the stats for the three-door mini here, all manual, although you can get every version of the mini with an automatic gearbox too. And you have to say that mini's engine lineup and its naming convention is still about the clearest that there is. Ish. Engines wise it is anyway, so you know that one is for fuel economy, Cooper is the sweet spot between performance and efficiency, and then Cooper S and JCW are the quick ones. But Mini also likes to keep making up trim lines and special editions and stuff. So at the moment, the main trim levels are called Classic, Exclusive, and Sport. And the special edition is called Resolute, which I think is called that because it's what you have to be when you're confronted with a configurator all the stickers and all that that you can get. I'm not gonna spend any more money on this. I'm not, I'm not. Urgh, bonnet stripes. 
Anyways, here's what today's basic mini looks like. I'm sorry I sound like this, I've actually got COVID. A couple of things to warn you about, like how grey is the only non-cost colour, which isn't really very funky and mini, is it? But there you go, it's a way of making you pay extra for a fancy hue. And if you want a one classic, as in the slowest and most basic one, it's on Steelies, plastic wheel trims. Disgusting! Still, they all get proper LED headlamps, aircon, Tom Cruise control, and the same widescreen infotainment setup inside the big central circle. And that's possibly not the reality you expected, given Mini's extensive options list and its penchant for all the accoutrement. Yeah, you can spend a fortune on a Mini with the options list. Stop the press, eh? For example, though, there are currently 13 different designs of alloy wheel that you can spend extra money on. But honestly, this is so smart now and looks so good inside and out that you really don't have to be heavy handed with your digital biro anymore. So let's talk about what it's like to drive. Cue Mario Kart. Yeah. Do you know what? By now, describing mini dynamics and driving and handling characteristics is kind of like describing what it's like to drink. Oh, bloody hell, thanks puddle. <laughs> By now, describing mini dynamics and driving characteristics is kind of like describing what it feels like to drink a cup of tea. Everybody just knows now, right? But in fairness, this is a proper brew, a proper hot, strong, non-milky cup of Yorkshire. Brews that bring a tear to your eye and warmth to your soul. And what's always been great about the Mini for the last two decades is that it's done that from the bottom of the range. The Mini 1 isn't quick, but it is genuinely eight tenths as much, I know that was specific, <laughs> eight tenths as much fun to go around a corner in as a JCW is. The reason for that is a very specific blend of physical proportions, flawless ergonomics, and an unashamedly handling biased suspension and steering setup. So the wheels are actually pushed right into the corners of the car, which is a thing that you hear, but doesn't really happen very often. Overhangs in a Mini are tiny. And the driving position is low. Again, it's something you hear a lot, but it's like backside on the road low. And it all adds up to something that's not the most comfortable, but is one of the most intuitive to drive cars on sale at any price. It's actually one of the most ergonomically well sorted out cars on the market, regardless of size and price. Now I'm six foot four, right? And people always ask me if I can fit into a Mini. I suppose it's the logical question, but the fact is, I can, the BMW ones anyway, and it's because they're so basically ergonomically sorted. Like the seat goes miles back and miles down and the wheel's really adjustable and the pedals are dead far away and they're really nicely spaced out. And it never feels claustrophobic because it's got a lot of glass and it's got really thin pillars. The roof line feels high. Basically, the Mini is proof that you don't need to be an SUV to have proper visibility and proper ergonomics and a proper sense of space. You just need to package things properly. Now, obviously there are universal laws and all of that stuff means there isn't much space left for other people and bags and stuff. But again, it's a mini, right? You know that it's more like a two seat car with a reasonable boot and another bit of boot space behind the front seats. I actually owned the car that I'm reviewing out there until very recently and we all went to London in it. Bit of a squeeze, but it worked. And then we got sick and I bought a bigger car. <laughs> And the thing is, if you do need more practicality, then you can get a five door mini, or you can get a countryman, or you can just look at something else, get a crossover. So, John Cooper works stuff. Now, all the above stuff applies. All the stuff I said about driving a mini applies to this one, but then you just add some percentage and a lot of speed, and therefore you get much more fun, much more drama. Bit more grippy, bit more louder, bit less comfortable. And all that augments it into being one of the most fun things to drive that's front wheel drive ever. So this particular facelift added an adaptable suspension setup to the mini options list, but it's standard on the JCW. Now it's not adaptable as in you can switch between modes, but what it does instead is monitors the situation that you're in, monitors the road and what the car's doing, and then adjusts the damper rates accordingly. So in theory, you get a bit more feel when you're driving quick and you get a bit more 
suppleness when you're just pottering around town. Honestly, if you're thinking about it as an option, I wouldn't bother. It doesn't feel like a magic suspension setup. It's not like when you get into some cars with adaptable suspension where they really have a dual character. And in this car, it's never really stopping it from juddering around. Honestly, this car has all the ride quality of a conjugal visit. Think about that one. <laughs> but honestly, that won't bother you one bit because it's the price you pay for one of the most involving, most exciting, most interesting experiences that you can have in a car within the legal speed limit. And it's got a tight turning circle too. All good. And that is why the JCW still makes loads of sense, even though as far as small, quick hatchbacks go, it is on the pricey side, obviously. You see, once you've added a couple of packs to this, which you will, and maybe an auto, it ain't cheap. Yeah. Still, for my money, it has a better interior and it is generally more fun than all of these. Albeit, I've not driven the Hyundai yet. But I will, if it's the last thing I do. I honestly think that this car is right on the sweet spot between being really fast and really loud and really exciting, but also not so quick that you're at risk of losing your driving license. It's a car that's actually very easy to just drive around in really slowly. It's not always egging you on to go as fast as possible, even though it's got a fantastically revvy engine and one of the best crescendos you'll hear in a small car, noise-wise. So this two litre turbo engine is actually getting pretty old now. And in modern context, it is starting to feel a little bit like an anachronism when other manufacturers are getting much more power out of smaller capacity engines. But that's part of its charm. It has this kind of old school feel about it. It feels kind of oversized and like it's not really being worked to the max, you know? It doesn't feel like it's all turbo. It actually feels like it's really linear in the way it delivers its power. Instead, it's just a big old two litre turbo engine shoehorned into a tiny little car and it feels responsive and it makes a lovely natural sound. It's proper. It's not all like fake exhaust noise. The engine and the sound that it makes are definitely highlights in this car, probably the highlights of the car, but there are a lot of other little things that add together to make this just a brilliantly involving experience. The seats are phenomenal, so they give you loads of lateral grip, but they don't bear hug you. The steering wheel's thick and chunky and just has a really nice feel about it. It's that haptic stuff that Mini or BMW rather just get right most of the time. And the steering itself is just one of the best beefiest setups in a hot hatch. So it's got adaptable steering, you put it into comfort mode and it lightens up. But then in sport mode, it has a really lovely weight to it without feeling fig and it's pin sharp. But it's not just about the sharpness, like lots of cars have sharp steering, but you still don't actually get any feel coming up through the wheel and through your hands. This thing, you really do, you really know where the edges of grip are in this car at the front end. And again, I used this phrase before, but it all just feels second nature. Almost like you're not moving it with your hands, you're moving it with your eyes. That is a rare quality, and it's especially rare for a car that you can get for about 30 grand. So this one's an automatic, and I know that a lot of people prefer manuals, especially in like small, powerful front wheel drive hatchbacks like this. And the gearbox in this thing is phenomenal, but I actually think that now that automatics are this good, really quick shift and it actually knocks a couple of tenths off the 0-62 time. It kind of allows you to focus more on just the steering of the thing. Always with two hands on the wheel, he says. I know that I gesticulate a lot when I do these things, sorry. But you just end up focusing on accelerating, braking and turning the car. And it's got flappy paddles if you like them. I don't. The computer can do a better job than I can, so... Not frightened to admit that. My masculinity is not anchored to how good I am at changing gear with my fingers. Anyway, all in all, it's just like a supercar diorama. Emphasis on the diorama bit there. It's clearly not a supercar. It does give you that sense of real drama condensed down. It feels like a car that was built around a driving experience rather than a driving experience that's been shoehorned into a particular car if that makes sense. Just like dances around in your hands, which is exactly what a small, quick car should do. Now, before you start having a go at me in the comments and saying I'm biased, I am obviously biased, but I like to think that I'm being as subjective as I possibly can be, because there are cars that are a lot better than this in many ways. But what I think about this car is that it just has that really good blend of being like proper good fun, and it looks cool and it feels interesting, and I don't really care that much that it's not very comfortable or it has really crap space in the back. <laughs> I wanted a car with a red roof and red wing mirrors, right? And also, it sounds like this. It's proper that like. And that's why I really think you should consider this if you are after a small, fast, 
petrol powered car. And do it quickly before you just can't get this sort of thing new anymore. So in conclusion, Mini still good, Fast Mini even more still good. The end. Wander off. The end. It's a mini adventure. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed that. We'll keep this brief. You're doing great.